What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. Today, we're going to be going through some practice problems to get you guys ready for quiz 2, coming up for CHA 101. So, I'm going to present you guys with a list of scenarios, kind of affecting the brachial plexus, the axillary artery, maybe some muscles and nerves and different types of innervation and we're just going to work through what the answers will be okay so i'm going to present you guys with the questions give you guys a couple multiple choice and then i want you to pause the video try to work through it think of it on your own and then unpause and we'll talk about the answer together cool so let's get started all right guys so essentially what's going on here is we have a 24 year old that presents with a lesion of the upper trunk of the brachial plexus so which of the following is most likely true Go ahead and pause the video and read over the answer choices and give it a try. So she has a problem with her upper trunk. So we're keeping in mind of the different trunks, right? We have roots, trunks, divisions, uh, the cords, and then the different branches. So our answer choices here are paralysis of the rhomboid major, inability to raise the arm above 90 degrees. The arm tends to lie in a medial rotation. And then we also have loss of sensation on the medial side of the arm. So let's break down each of these. So here we have upper trunk. Okay, so I'm thinking of upper trunk. Um, now my upper trunk, I know if I have, here we have C5 and C6 come together, they form my upper trunk. So here's C5 and C6. And then we have C7. And then we have C8 and T1 come together. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with. What do we know that comes off the upper trunk? Well, coming directly off my upper trunk here, I actually have my suprascapular nerve. Suprascapular nerve. Coming off of C5, we have dorsal scapular nerve. So just to kind of orient us, those might affect our answer choices. So if we look at A, paralysis of the rhomboid major, what do we know is the rhomboid major is innervated by which nerve? Yeah, so it's gonna be dorsal scapular nerve. So our dorsal scapular nerve comes off of C5 and supplies the rhomboid major, the rhomboid minor, and the levator scapulae. But our question here is saying that there's a problem with the upper trunk. So it doesn't necessarily tell us anything about the dorsal scapular nerve, so it can't be that one. Let's look at B, inability to raise the arm above 90. So which muscle helps us raise our arm above 90 degrees? Yeah, so let's start from zero to 15. We have the supraspinatus, supraspinatus. 15 to 90 is our deltoid. And then 90 degrees and upward gives us that lateral rotation of the scapula. That's going to be our serratus anterior. So we've got our serratus anterior that goes 90 degrees and up, right? But we know our serratus anterior is innervated by the long thoracic nerve, which is a combination of C5, C6, and C7, forming my long thoracic nerve. Right? But nowhere here did we say we have any problems with our C5, C6, or C7. So it's not going to be our long thoracic nerve that's affected. So it can't be this B. So if we go to C, arm tends to lie in the medial rotation. So what's basically happening is you have muscles that help you medially rotate and the arm. So we should say here medial rotation of arm. So you have muscles that help you medially rotate the arm and laterally rotate the arm. So essentially, you have some muscles inserting onto the greater tubercle of the humerus. So that's going to be let's see, greater tubercle. These are essentially coming from the posterior side of the arm and are going to help us laterally rotate. So these are lateral rotators. So these would include the infraspinatus, supraspinatus, and teres minor. And then we know attached to the lesser tubercle, 
we have one muscle that goes on the anterior side that goes to the lesser tubercle. That's my subscapularis. So my subscapularis will help me immediately rotate. So essentially here, if the arm tends to lie in the medial rotation, well, let's figure out what innervates the medial rotators and what innervates the lateral rotators. So coming directly off my upper trunk is my suprascapular nerve. This goes and supplies my supraspinatus and my infraspinatus. So these muscles are helping me laterally rotate. But if this nerve is damaged, if this nerve is damaged, then those lateral rotators aren't working as well, right? We still have a little bit of teres minor, but my supraspinatus and my infraspinatus aren't laterally rotating. That means relative to my subscapularis, the arm is going to be more of a medially rotated position because we no longer have these lateral rotators keeping the arm kind of in check in a neutral position. So the arm is going to be more medially rotated because we've lost innervation to our lateral rotators. So this one here is going to be our answer choice. All right, and then just to finish it off, loss of sensation on the medial side of the arm. This is my medial brachial cutaneous nerve. Yeah. So nowhere here are we involved with our medial brachial cutaneous nerve because we know that comes off the medial cord and we're dealing with specifically our upper trunk. All right, hopefully that was helpful, guys.